how I got forever banned from playing cleric at a table. U slash Malharan on r slash D&D green text says, One of the most memorable characters I've ever played in Pathfinder started as one of my most unhappy starts ever, as the GM starts off by decreeing that the only race allowed was human. Unhappy as I was, I still made the best of it, and I decided to play a cleric of Ragathiel. For those of you who don't know, Ragathiel is of the destruction domain, and is lawful good. Clerics also gain proficiency in their deity's favored weapon, which in this case means the bastard sword, and this is where the fun begins. The GM decides to go with the standard point-by system for our stat line, which is amazing for me, lets me perfectly balance my glorious creation's stats, wink wink. I decide to completely use dex as a dump stat, allowing me to have wisdom and charisma as my high tier stats, and an average strength and con. I use my human racial trait to bump up my con. I guess human does have some good benefits after all. I decide on taking proficiencies in heavy armor and tower shields, and I take a few traits that buff my craft and profession skills. Of course, I choose the glorious destruction and law domains, and this is where I begin to lay the groundwork. I decided that my backstory was that I was a blacksmith for my church, and asked my GM if I could have crafted my own weapons and armor before the campaign starts. He gives me the go-ahead and lets me roll. Nat 19, add my bonuses to that, and let's just say it was a real big number. The GM tells me that I was able to craft all the arms and armor I have, which makes me very happy, as I start with full plate armor, a tower shield, and the beautiful bastard sword. Let's fast forward to game time and introduce the party, shall we? I am playing the lawful good human cleric of Regathiel, and accompanying me is a rogue, sword saint with the samurai archetype, and a paladin. All humans, of course, ugh. The GM wants to look over all of our character sheets, and seems to take a long look at my own. He dares to question why I am wielding my glorious bastard sword in one hand without the exotic weapon proficiency feat. After letting him know it's my god's favored weapon, and a bit of fumbling through the books, he knows that I am correct. I feel a great wave of glee as he sees my ridiculously high AC, and immediately regrets his allowance of me to craft my own gear. I blow pretty much all of my gold on various supplies and a masterwork backpack, and thus, the game begins. We start by gathering in a council of various organizations, both religious and not, and it's decided that we're to be the strike force to deal with the first wave of undead from the bleeding crypt. I take some time to prepare myself mentally and quietly pray to my god, as to not bother my party, as I am a very respectful cleric. After this preparation, we all head out. I immediately make friends, as I offer to carry the heavy stuff due to my god-tier carrying capacity. All thanks to my masterwork backpack. Our first encounter is a trivial standard fight. Somehow, I'm able to go first, even with my horrendous dex, and I take a good chunk of a zombie off with my first strike. The rogue moves in for a sneak attack, the paladin taking on a separate zombie, and our sword saint moves in, but can't use his EI jutsu strike due to it being a full round action. I laugh at the zombies as they measly scratch at my high AC. When the party gets a bit beat up, I channel positive energy around me to heal my party, and finish off the zombie with chunks missing. I move forward to set up another flank, as the sword saint almost drops another zombie with his fancy blade work. Zombies still can't hit us, and the initiative is back on me. I immediately dust another zombie with my destructive smite, and we easily clean the rest up without much trouble. Party asks me why I built my glorious cleric this way, and the answer is easy. Tank cleric equals best cleric, plus it is stupid easy to make clerics super powerful. After I explain that with my channel and spontaneous casting, I can be an effective healer, the party moves on. After that, I smite a few more zombies, spread the glorious wrath of Regathiel, and get a level up. Our session ends. The next day resumes our antics, as it is time to explore an abandoned castle full of undead. Of course, I tank ahead, and the party quickly understands why tank cleric is best cleric. We meet a vampire who is actually at one point the high priest of my church, and I pop a true strike spell as he mocks us for fighting the inevitable, or some standard bad guy monologue stuff. Our paladin smites him mid-drawn-out monologue, and I immediately follow up with my true strike attack that I stack just a bit of destructive smite on top of, because destruction domain, nuff said. The vampire immediately retreats as we attacked him much quicker than anticipated. A secret door opens and reveals a giant zombie, which of course we have to fight. Who man was it a fight though, causing me to blow basically all of my spells and channels to keep my party up. I'm finally able to deal the final blow with my destructive smite, and I'm stunned as this was the first thing to even damage me leaving me with only one channel left. We find some treasure that contains a magical bastard sword that had the impact feature, and my jaw hit the floor. Fast forward to level 8, and I have grown to be stupidly powerful. I blew my feats on extra channel twice. 
The GM is quite irked with my antics, but can't help being impressed with what I have up my sleeve. We meet the vampire again and throw some quips back and forth. I open up with a combo of divine power and divine favor and throw a destructive smite straight into his undead face for a massive amount of damage. The sword saint uses his ring to teleport as a free action for his EI jutsu strike. The paladin goes on smiting, the rogue sneak attacks like a boss, and I pretty much am negating any and all damage dealt to us. The GM is getting real tired of this and pulls me aside post-session to ask why I'm hell-bent on turning almost every fight into a slaughter fest for us. I let him know that clerics are very easy to break and I wanted to get him back for race locking and creation. Did I mention that I don't like playing human? The next session we finish the fight we started and take out the vampire, and in a moment of role-playing I explain that Regathia weeps about his fallen high priest, but what must be done, must be done. I stab him through the heart and do the necessary rituals to keep a vampire dead, all while quietly saying prayers to Parasma to pass fair judgment upon him and ask that Regathiel forgive him as he was not himself. After that, we reach the center of the bleeding crypt, and it's there we find a lich raising an army of the dead and proceed to just absolutely waste him way too easily. Turns out that the lich is only a henchman to the BBEG, and after we get him to speak, the sword saint destroys his phylactery. After that, we step into the plane of undeath and proceed to murder everything in our path due to being OP. We finally reach the BBEG, something that the GM had custom built, so I'm not sure of what it was other than it needed to die. The fight immediately begins with no words from either side, as we knew why we had come. I had made sure to pre-buff before the fight, and I swing for all that I'm worth. Natural 1. Luckily, the rogue uses a good luck charm that lets me re-roll. Nat 20 with a confirmation. Max damage all the way, as the fury of Regathiel burns through me. The BBEG attempts to disintegrate me, but red angel wings wrap around me as I call upon Regathiel for aid. The rogue uses this distraction to slam a scroll of healing into the face of the BBEG. For those that don't know, healing magic harms undead in Pathfinder, reducing this BBEG to dust. We begin to make our way back to the material plane, and the doors begin to close as hordes of frenzied undead rush towards us. We stop running and I lift my magical bastard sword into the air and blow a hero point to use up every last bit of domain powers and spells to create a massive wave of destruction. After a ton of d6 rolls, the party is blasted through the portal. The party wakes up in the ruins of the bleeding crypt, surrounded by the rubble that once made up the portal between the two planes. Then they realize something. I am not with them. They have no way of reaching me. My cleric now stands guard over the portal to the world of the living within the plane of undeath and has been granted the title of the Unmoving Knight by Regathiel. The game ends and the GM says that he had a ton of fun, but I am banned from ever playing a cleric at his table again. And you know what? I can completely understand his reasoning. I hope you enjoyed this story as much as we did. Cleric is undoubtedly one of the strongest classes out there, and as the OP himself said, it is kinda hard not to play an OP cleric in Pathfinder. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel All Things D&D, and stay tuned for more amazing Dungeons & Dragons content.